And lastly, we'll talk over some of the options for chemical filtration. Each chemical is a little bit different. There's pros and cons to each. They all work slightly differently. For the basic iodine, like this, it does definitely have a taste. It won't do cryptosporidium, so it's basically just Giardia. It'll help kill the viruses that cause Giardia. If you ever had Giardia, it's not fun. But like I said, it does leave a aftertaste, so you can buy the packets like this that have the second set of tablets that are designed to help eliminate, neutralize some of that iodine taste and the color. It just takes up more space than having a single bottle of just the iodine tablets will. There's 50 tablets in each one of these. There's not very much space in here taken up by tablets, so you could buy more bottles and just stuff this bottle full of more tablets. Tablets, for a size reference, are pretty small. They're small, and each one will do a full quart. So, a normal military canteen size bottle, or the one liter water bottle back there, each tablet will do. Typically they come with 50 tablets, so 50 liters, until you have to go to a new bottle. While we talk through the rest of them, I'll just pop this iodine tablet into this glass of water so you can see I'm not going to put it in here because you're not going to be able to tell. The water's already dirty, obviously. It's already got a little bit of a color to it. So this brand new clean glass of water with an iodine tablet. As we talk through the rest, um, I'll let you see how it changes the, the color of the water. I know that this is a lot more dose than the normal application. We're supposed to be using one tablet per quart, but it'll be roughly four times more potent more concentrated than the normal serving size, just to give you an example. And then we'll have one last clear glass of water to compare everything to. For the iodine, I'm not going to read any of the directions. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown, a basic idea of what the directions entail. For these iodine tablets, you're basically taking a tablet out, putting it into your water vessel, your water bottle, leaving the cap slightly unscrewed, mixing vigorously for five minutes or so to make sure that you're fully dissolving the tablet and that some of the iodine solution is actually getting onto the threads of the water bottle, and then tightening the cap and giving it 30 minutes for the iodine to actually kill the viruses and bacteria that are in the water. It tells you even on it tells you even on the packaging that it's not necessarily known for killing or inactivating cryptosporidium. I don't know if this camera is actually going to focus on it, but it says right here that has not been shown to inactivate cryptosporidium cysts. So it's not effective against cryptosporidium. It's not the case for some of these chlorine. Um, the aquatabs, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this chemical, the active ingredient, but sodium, sodium diclo something. These ones take a little bit longer. Also, each tablet will do two quarts instead of just one. So this limited number of tablets will take you a little bit longer than one bottle of the iodine tablets will. They're supposed to give 10 minutes of vigorous shaking before then waiting 30 minutes before actually drinking. A lot of these do recommend that you filter out the larger contaminants. So if you think about it, if the viruses and bacteria that are in the water are permeating through whatever sediment that's floating in the water and you only have 30 minutes of actual active time where the chemical itself is killing those viruses and bacteria but it can't permeate all the way through that sediment then even though you used the product as designed and you waited the appropriate amount of time it potentially still didn't kill everything that was in the water because it couldn't get to it so that's the reason that most of these Directions, if you read through and follow directions correctly, recommends that you get at least the majority of as many of the sediment out as you can before applying the chemical purification. Another version of chemical filtration is like a two-part liquid solution. So 
following the directions. Just briefly talking you through, you mix eight drops of part A with eight drops of part B into the cap. Then you mix that into your liter of water, your quart of water. If it's normal room temperature, it'll take 15 minutes before the water is safe to drink. If the water is cold, it's supposed to give it double that amount of time, so 30 minutes before the water is safe to drink. Like I said, it'll do 30 gallons. Maybe a little bit easier to mess up because you have to count the drops. Whereas the tabs, you're just putting a single tab into a certain quantity of water. But I think the best solution are these, these Ketodyne Micro Pure MP1. They are sodium chlorite and sodium, with sodium chlorite being the primary active ingredient and then the same active ingredient from these aqua tabs being the secondary active ingredient. The problem with these, even though they are more effective and they taste less strongly, is you have to wait four hours before the water is actually safe to drink. They're equivalent in the overall quantity, whereas the iodine will do one quart per tab, the aqua tabs will do two quarts per tab. This will do a quart per eight drops from each solution. The Ketodyne Micro Pure MP1 tablets will do one quart of water per tablet. So if you can wait the four hours that it recommends you waiting from the time that you add it to your contaminated water source to the time you can actually drink it, but it has the least aftertaste and it's the most effective against bacteria and viruses. Um, a little more expensive, We've got two separate active ingredients, both sodium chloride and that primary active ingredient from the Aqua Tabs. The one that I can't pronounce. But I think health and safety wise, they make the most sense. So based on our little experiment that's been running, you can tell that there's a reason that they tell you to mix the tablets before they're actually effective. You can tell that even though it has been in there, that tablet's been in there for a little while, it hasn't really done much. It's slowly dissolving, but I need a little bit of like actual agitation to the water. So I get it more evenly spread so that I can actually do its job. You can see that just smaller, smaller portions of the sediment that are now just finishing dissolving kind of instantly change the color of the water. So it's definitely gonna have some taste, that iodine taste. But if you're used to it, it's not a big deal. It's not that unhealthy unless you're drinking it in mass quantities. It's a lot healthier than getting Giardia. As far as chemical filtration, yes, there is like kind of homemade solutions of contaminated water to a certain number of drops of unscented, undyed bleach, but I think that's too risky to talk through in this video. I'd much prefer, and I'd recommend if you're going to use chemical filtration for water, buy something off the shelf that's been tested with a strict set of directions to follow so you're not risking your health or safety to just save a little bit of money because you're not willing to spend a little extra to ensure you're drinking water safe. Sorry, the camera overheated, I got a little distracted. So trying to pick back up where I left off. Um, this iodine tablet's now completely dissolved. You can kind of see it's a lot more yellow than this clear glass. Definitely has a smell to it. It won't be that concentrated in the normal full liter size bottle. That's a quarter of the amount of water that's in a liter bottle like that so it won't be as strong this is just for demonstration purposes to show you that it does make an effect to the water regardless of how dirty it started it's going to be a little bit less clear and a little bit more of a taste than a normal taste of water i'll put a little bit more detail in a couple separate screenshots for the more specific pros and cons of each individual chemical, but just very quick rundown. Iodine does not work on everything, has a pretty strong taste, but it is cost effective. It 
These aqua tabs are a little less cheap. But they have a better taste and they work on more things, including Giardia and Cryptosporidium, bacteria and viruses. The chlorine dioxide does just as much as these potentially more quickly. And lastly, the MicroPure MP1 tablets that take a little bit longer to use, but they're a little more effective and less of an aftertaste. Another thing to keep in mind for all of the chemical purification methods is they all technically do have some sort of expiration date. Some of them are harder to find than others. These Kitadine MicroPure MP1 tablets it's got the expiration date printed on the side of the label. Pretty hard to read, but it is there. These are fairly easy to find. This is pretty expired and these are old. Uh, these expired in 2019, August of 2019. The iodine tablets and these aqua tabs, I'm sure they have an expiration date. I just couldn't find it. Um, you could maybe make the argument that it's still going to work, it's just going to be less effective, but for the purposes of this video, I would just recommend if it's past the expiration date, don't use it. Covered a lot in these four videos. I'm sure there's a lot of things I missed. Um, I'll do my best to try to cover up any loose ends or answer anything or clarify anything that wasn't the most clear after talking through all of this for the last hour or so just in the subtitles, but if anybody has any questions or anybody has any other tips, recommendations, something that I forgot to mention, something I was incorrect or unclear about, please leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching.